Most shooting folk look for three gun dog breeds, Labradors, Cockers and Springers. I'm here with Dave from Countryways Gun Dogs asking what we should look for in those types of puppies. So when I first made contact with you, uh, Dave, you, you steered me more towards a Labrador as opposed to a Springer or a Cocker, because I initially thought a Cocker would be suited to me, but you've had other plans. Well, at the present moment, as you probably know, everybody wants to own a Cocker. They're cute, they're pretty, they're really nice, and they're probably the, the flavour of the month at the moment. But we've always got to look at what you're going to do with it. Mm. If you think Labrador's job is to sit down, do nothing where the world goes ballistic, which is a bit like living in somebody's house. Yeah. And it's also when we're shooting, yeah. you're going to sit down, do as we're told. It's going to rain sweets out the sky and I've got to sit still until I'm handled. Now, Springer's job, he's the one who's supposed to be going ballistic. So he's there quartering and hunting and flushing game. So he's a lot more buzzy, mm -hmm. even though in our breeding, and you know yourself because I have been shooting with you. I do sit all my springers on the peg. That's amazing. So it means five or six dogs just sat there, not watching well go by. It's just well, all hell's breaking. It's a little bit of work. Yeah. But all my springers have to sit on the peg as well. That's why I breed a softer type of springer. So they're yeah. a bit more like a Labrador and whatever. So that that is what we try and achieve. So you can take it all shooting. You don't have to compete with it. It's just not a Ferrari. Yeah. You can also take it to Tesco's, basically. So if you're going to have, from a first time point of view, Labradors are almost, almost born trained. They make life a lot easier. And from what, the, what you do with your shooting, because you're mainly on the peg and you're mainly doing that. Or stood behind. Hopefully. Or stood behind. A lot easier to have a Labrador and do it that way. Not to say that you can't have a Cocker and you can't have a Springer, but they are different. Now, if you're going to have a Cocker, Cockers, they abuse the fact that they're the cutest thing in the world. Yeah. Everybody loves them. They want to be all over you and they're nice, right? And they abuse that. The only reason that people really, really like them is the closer you get to a cocker, the closer it gets to you. Yeah. It wants that attention. But like I said, it abuses that attention. They know so, full well how cute they are. They know how cute yeah. they are. They know how small they are. They know exactly how much you're going to love them. What you must do is, if you do have a cocker, you start off by putting your basics and your your manners in to start with. If not, you'll get a problem leaving them and we'll, because they want that attention all the time. But when I said to you about having it, it's all to do with what you're going to do in the future. If you said to me, David, I do a, a little bit of rough shooting also, um, I'm going to go a little bit of beating, right? Then I would steer you towards a Springer Spaniel. And then if, you, and if you're going to steer towards a Cocker, just make sure it's bred correctly, yeah. right? Because Cockers can be a nightmare. Is it a similar, going back to the, you know, the Labrador pedigree, is it being bred correctly, what, what defines it's that with a cocker? Exactly the same, looking at somebody who's bred that dog for a reason, a purpose, okay? Obviously the pedigree tells us again where we're coming from and what it is. If you go into a breeder that has been breeding for a few years, you should know the ancestry. He could turn around to you and you could say, right, okay, this dog's a champion, it's going to breed, you know, it's going to be um, quite easy to train. Look at temperament. Temperament is everything. Get that breeding with the paperwork correct and get that sort of that trainability. With all of them, they want that retrieving in with them. Yeah. Especially with cockers. Yeah. If they don't retrieve to start with, you got a job. Yeah. Even if you're not going to use it. If you're going to use it for beating and never go retrieving, it's very difficult to train it without it being a good retriever. Try and look at the mother. If the mother is a good good dog, just because it's a cocker and it's cute doesn't mean it's everything. Yeah. Your first dog, I did it. My first Springer I ever had drove me crazy. And the reason I'm sat here today is because the first one I was advised to buy was half show, half working. Yeah. Drove me crazy. And I was fortunate. I met somebody like myself, yeah. or now, today, and I bought a champion to win in Labrador. Yeah. And it changed my life. Kind, easy dog. Yeah. And so, start with Labradors are easier, and then you breach into Cockers. Sure. And Cockers can be fun. The, you know, Cocker's reputation still precedes it in terms of they are a bit, can be a bit wild and, you know, the, you know people who have them on the peg are uh, it's Paul's errand and all yeah. sorts. So. They are a difficult thing. They are difficult. I am always described to all my clients, if you come to the you know, house, you come with a Labrador, I say the Labrador has four legs on the ground. Yeah. It puts your head on your lap and you stroke it and you stroke its ears all day and you love it to death. Yeah. And it's there and it's gorgeous. You have a Springer, you have two paws on your lap a waggy tail and lots of characters yeah. and then you have a cocker and it's sat on your head <laughs> and that's what it does it basically sits on your head and if you wear it you wear it like a scarf as my partner andrew says yeah. you just wear it like a scarf now 
that is great to have and it's got lots and lots of character and there's nothing cuter than a cocker running no, no, around i it. mean the speed and the drive and actually a lot of cockers now when we get into technical side they have a lot more gun sense yeah um, a few of the springers now have changed now they're not as good in a, in a gun sense and whatever yeah right we change springers we change springers to be a lot softer because if you think about it most people that go hunting now or shooting now they only have two options yeah they are either shoot with a gun and they stand at the peg or they go beating so when they're going beating they have lots of stimulation mm. there's going to be 2,000 pheasants in front of them yeah so they don't need to be self-stimulating no. They're being stimulated all the time. Yeah. So they want a softer type of dog that's raised with that confidence again. Yeah. Whereas back in the day when people were rough shooting all the time, they wanted a Springer Spaniel that would hunt a hedge yeah. from here back to Cornwall. Yeah. Now that dog was a lot harder and a lot stronger. And, and it had its self-stimulation. Yeah. But if you took that dog on a shoot now that most people go on and go beat him with 2,000 pheasants in front of them, the dog would be out of control. Every, there'd be, it, it basically, it's caviar. Yeah. Caviar. <laughs> All the time. Angry keeper. Yeah. <laughs> and so, what now? You have a softer type of dog because most of us, are, unfortunately, there's not a lot of rough shooting in general where people just go out to hunt one pheasant. Yeah. So most of us will be on a, on a shooting event where it's a lot more stimulation. So you have a softer type of dog that you lift with confidence, and that's why Springers have changed in general in the way they're bred. They're not the mad things that people used to go. But on even in with. the last decade you've seen a big oh, change. Oh massive change. Massive, wow. massive change. Wow. If you looked at any one of mine and there's two or three bitches in there that are champions, wouldn't say boo to a goose, the calmest, nicest dog you've ever seen, lie down all day, shoot with you all day. Springers. Yeah. Yeah. The minute I do that, they're switched on. It run through that wall. <laughs> right? And they will hit Bramble and you will cringe. People think that the the aggressiveness is what makes them hunt. It's not, it's about breeding. Yeah. Thank you, David. For more about Countrywise Gun Dogs, go to countrywisegundogs.com.